Hello viewers, uh, in my last video I made some repairs to a NVIDIA 6800 GT video card. After one of my viewers saw that, he uh, sent me a message to say he has a video card that he used in his one of his retro machines um, and it's actually suffered a bit of damage and would I take a look at it? Um, so Daniel from Dorset sent me this. Um, I've not actually opened it yet, so I'm not really sure what's inside. We exchanged a couple of messages and I sort of discussed exactly what was wrong with it and it seems like something hit the card um, and it's broken something off. Um, from the pictures it looks like it should be a relatively easy fix uh, but um, I'm assuming there's no other damage other than the, the bit that I've seen. So I've got my video microscope set up. Um, we'll open the box, see what's inside and see if we can get this fixed. Right, uh, let's open this up and see what we have. Looks like it's included some thermal transfer paste uh, for reassembly, a video card packed in some anti-static packaging. Brilliant, because so few people do this. Right, let's just move the box out of the way. Right, uh, the card is an MSI GeForce 4 Ti 4600. Um, there's just a reference number up there. Um, it's obviously got an MSI logo on the fan, so um, quick Google, MSI and 8872 brings up the 4600 VTD. Um, so we've got 128 mega DDR RAM on here. Um, so I think what has actually happened is the heat sink and fan has become dislodged and what it's done, it's actually knocked off the one of the crystal oscillators, uh, which would sit just, just in there. So it looks like that is all that's wrong. Now what I'm going to do is um, get this under the video microscope so we can actually see all the components around there a little bit better because they're all uh, pretty small. Uh, it's hard to see. Otherwise it will give us a much better idea of what we're actually dealing with. So here's the area in question. You can see around here we've got R972 but see how the pads are rounded off. That means that they were never installed in the first place so they're not, they're not missing at all. So I can't really see anything that might be a problem. This looks a bit gunky down here. I'm not quite, this looks like flux residue. It's not being cleaned off properly. So we might give that a, give a bit of a clean just to get it off. This episode of Dexter's Tech Lab is brought to you with the support of PCBWay. PCBWay offer an extensive range of services for custom and prototype PCBs. If you're an electronics hobbyist like myself, I can highly recommend you try them out. If you're not quite ready to design your own PCBs yet, then they have a large range of ready to make designs if you want to do some project electronic builds. Uh, links will be in the video description. Go and get yourself some top notch PCBs. <laughs> Right, that end looks okay, and the other looks okay too. So what we need to do now is get this card cleaned up, um, and then we can try and test it. Finished it, I've given it a clean. Um, I've just noticed actually that the oscillator is actually for the Philips TV output chip, so um, it might have worked anyway, you never know, but it depends whether the drivers would have failed to initialize the, um, the IC. But So we've got it all there. Uh, I just need to put the heat sink and fan on temporarily so we can give it a test. I'm not going to bother with any uh, heat transfer compound at this point uh, because I just need to turn it on just for a few minutes just to make sure it posts and uh, see what the deal is. So well, that's the heat sink on. Those uh, steak post things are a bit horrible to be honest. Um, they don't really seem that secure but it's definitely on there. I mean it doesn't have to hold a lot of weight so it should be fine. The fun back in. Oh, excellent. We have video output. So that's coming from the DVI port at the moment. Um, 
which is un which is actually analog video because it's running through my voodoo's so i'm going to swap this over onto the analog vga port check make sure that's working um, and we will also need to eventually test the digital side of the DVI port. So uh, I think what I'll do, I'll swap over to the VGA port and we'll actually try and boot into Windows. Right, so uh, off camera, I've just verified the VGA port works fine. So we're just gonna boot into Windows and see what we get. Right, just got the display properties there, and uh, yeah, a GeForce 4 Ti 4600, uh, four times AGP, which is the best this motherboard does. Um, 128 mega RAM, that's all fine. So yeah, we're looking really, really good on this. Um, what I'll do now is I'll just take the card back out. I'm gonna take the fan off, uh, because I wanna give that a clean and a bit of a service. Um, and then we'll remount that with the thermal transfer paste, and uh, we'll do a quick benchmark. Now another thing I noticed when I took this out is the um, ground wire for the fan is actually slightly broken. The, the wire is good, but the insulation has been cut away. Not sure what's done that. Uh, maybe it's been caught when it was assembled, um, but I'm just gonna fix that up and I'm also going to make a neater job of the fan wire as well. Yep, we knew that was gonna happen. Well, it's a good job to spot it now, so we can fix it. Okay, what I've done here, because the wire is so small, I've actually put a small hook on the end of each wire and then hooked them around each other, you know, like that. So um, it should be nice and secure once that's soldered, and then we can just bring the heat shrink down and cover that up we should have a really really good fix there right now that's fixed uh, what we can do is actually spin these wires around each other just hold them like that and then spin the wire so you get this really nice neat twisted wire and it doesn't want to come apart or whatever so that always works really well for me Right, that's all attached. Those uh, plastic stake things are absolutely terrible. Um, yeah, they don't work very well at all. Uh, I wonder whether in the past um, the heat sink's been taken off um, and they've not, whoever did it, didn't really pull out the pin first and the little notches that are supposed to spread out on the bottom underneath have actually just been pulled off so they don't really stay in that well. But I think um, it only has to support the weight of the heat sink. I think it's gonna be fine, really. So now we just need to give it another test and do a benchmark. Right, so I'm just uh, capturing the output there from the DVI port. Um, so that verifies that that works and we're just gonna run um, 3D Mark 2001 second edition and we'll see what score we get. This is also a good test to, uh, a good test of the actual card itself. So uh, 
let's see what we get. The uh, the normal 3D mark I get on this system with the 6800 GT is 10,881 marks. So um, I'm going to have this set all to my defaults and we'll run the benchmark. So there we go, we have uh, 8,763 3D marks, so uh, quite respectable really. So we have a fully working uh, GeForce 4 Ti 4600 ready to go back to its owner. I hope you enjoyed this one, if you did give it a big thumbs up, share and all that sort of stuff. Comments are always welcome in the comments section. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you on the next video, bye for now.